Hey everyone, it's Emmy Hall at TFL Car, and finally the day has arrived. I get to drive the 2016 Mazda MX-5, and they have put us up on a great driving road. But is this car gonna measure up to my one true love, my 2004 Mazda Speed Miata? Well, we'll find out next coming up on the Fast Lane Car. is going to actually have three, three Miatas. We'll have the 2016, we'll have this one, the 1990, and we're gonna have mine, a 2004. Mazda's given us a two liter Sky Active engine. Now, some of you might be thinking that is too small of an engine. The horsepower rating is down from last year. But listen, I talked to one of the engineers. We've got a whole separate video with him and he explains perfectly why this car has plenty of power. And all that power is going to the rear wheels via a six speed manual transmission. Now listen, you can get an automatic with this car, but here's the thing. If you have both your legs and you get an automatic, I will literally come to your house and hunt you down and kill you because this car deserves to be driven with a manual. Now fuel ratings of this car are 34 out on the highway and 27 in the city. Expect a little bit more with the automatic, but just, just, just don't, just don't. has got all the stuff that you want. It makes a great starting point for a little old race car, right? First of all, I've got Bill's Dean shocks. I've got a shock tower brace. I've got a little bit of an aero kit on there. I've got Bridgestone Potenza tires, but most importantly, I have the limited slip differential, which you do not get in the GT. And it just, oh wow. While the interior of the Miata has gained a little bit of space, it's still very simple. How simple? The cup holders are removable because they didn't want them to get in the way of your shifting while you're driving. So I commend you on that Mazda, thank you. Mazda claims it has made the 2016 MX-5 more like the first version, which I'm in right now. I'm in the 1990 Miata, which is good for 116 horsepower, 100 pound-feet of torque, very, very lightweight car. Five-speed, short throw shifter. Ooh, get it, Boxster, get it. <laughs> do have now a color seven inch color touchscreen. A lot of that is because uh, government is mandating backup cameras now. So unfortunately you do have that. What's great is that it is down in your eye, in your eye line. So it doesn't interfere with your eyesight while you're driving. The seats in this car are very comfortable. They have kind of a, a, a very thin layer of material for the back that is still supportive. Yet while you sit in it, your own body weight kind of curls the bolsters around you. So you'll get it in and you'll feel like the seat is made just for you. And in a way, it, I guess it kind of is. They have lowered the driving position. So you sit much lower in the car. It, you know, when I first got in it, I was, I really wanted to raise myself up, but now that I'm used to it, I love it. I feel so much more connected to the road. Now I have electric power steering and the electric steering uh, device is connected on the rack, not on the column. And it does load up nicely in corners. Uh, it's pretty light when you're just driving around town, but I'm just driving around town, right? The only thing is that because it's electric, I just, I really want to have a little bit more 
feedback. I mean, I'm getting so much feedback through the road. I'm feeling every single little pebble, every pavement change, all of that is coming up through the chassis, and I wish that I could get that through the steering wheel as well. But how does the 2016 MX-5 compare to my Miata, which is a 2004 Mazda Speed? Now that comes with a factory turbo. In fact, the, it's completely stock. The only thing that I have on mine that is not is the fantastic roll bar behind me that you see. This is a 1.8 liter, which is good for 178 horsepower and 166 pound-feet of torque. Now that is more than the new Miata. It's just an all-around good time. Mazda has taken this fourth generation MX-5 and just completely revolutionized it. I really like how the front hood just is pulled down just a little bit so that when you're in the car, you just feel like you're closer to the road. You get a much bigger sense of speed out of that. Now there's not a lot of creases on the body, save for that fender crease that comes up over the top and it actually extends into the cabin. So again, while you're sitting in the car, you really do feel like the outside is coming in to meet you and it just increases the sense of fun and the sense of speed that you get when you're behind the wheel of this car. I can't even, I've just been grinning ear to ear today, you guys, it's just been the best. Now this 2004 really does hit the sweet spot in terms of tech because there isn't any, right? There is no GPS in this car. There's no traction control. There's no blind spot monitoring. There's no rear view camera. In fact, the only kind of safety device that I really have in this is ABS. One of the things in this car, it's pretty typical for all Miatas, right? The suspension's pretty soft and there's a fair amount of body roll, but they do that because they wanna make sure that you know exactly what the car is doing. And they also figure that those of us who are gonna be driving these Miatas, especially this club edition, we're gonna be seeking out these crazy off the beaten path roads without a lot of traffic. And roads without a lot of traffic in general have less maintenance. So you're riding over a little bit rougher roads and it's easier with a softer suspension. <laughs> For this. Okay, well, first of all, let's go back to the NA. Yes, this is much closer to the NA, okay? I can completely feel it. I can feel it in the way it handles. I can feel it in the way it sticks. Uh, the weight of the car, I mean, except for the steering, it really, really has gone back to the NA. I've got three different levels of pricing. The sport mode is gonna be your basic MX-5. That starts at $24,915. Now the car behind me is the club, and this is the one that you wanna get if you're a little bit of an aggressive driver with a tiny little piece of lead in your foot, okay? That one goes for $28,600. And if you just love the look of the Miata, but maybe you're not quite an aggressive driver, you want it more for Sunday drives, weekend work, that is the GT and that comes in at $30,065. Now, I used to drive a regular second generation. I would, I would pick this over the regular second generation any day. More power, it's more comfortable, there's more torque, like without a doubt. cars are very affordable and they just make you smile and isn't that the point of life to have a good time hey thanks so much for watching tfl car i'm emmy hall you can subscribe and also check us out on all those social medias thanks for watching bye So you all know that Mazda cut a lot of weight out of this car from the third generation. They cut about 150 pounds. They got that out of the engine, transmission, differential, but there's one thing where they added weight. 
they made sure that they kept the aluminum valve cover on this car because otherwise you're going to open up the hood and what's it going to look like? Plastic Tupperware. They didn't want that. They wanted to make sure that we had an actual sports car engine under the hood. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Subscribe. There's a button somewhere on the screen wherever Ian decides to put it. I don't know. And be sure to follow us on all those crazy social medias. Bye.